Welcome to Grace Middleway. I'm sorry we're not on Facebook Live this morning, but we'll try and get it on YouTube this afternoon. Um, this is Trinity Sunday, and we'll begin with morning prayer, right two, starting on page 77 after the processional hymn.
on page 77. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Lord, open our lips. And thou shalt proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's say together the Venite, found on page 82. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his for he made it and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Let's say together Psalm 29. We'll say it by half verse and end with a refrain. Ascribe to the Lord, you gods. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. The glory of God thunders. The Lord is upon the mighty waters. The voice of the Lord is a powerful voice. The voice of the Lord is a voice of splendor. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedar trees. The Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon. He makes Lebanon skip like a calf and Mount Hermon like a wild ox. The voice of the Lord splits the flames of fire. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord makes the oak trees with writhe and strips the forest bare. And in the temple of the Lord, all are crying glory. The Lord sits enthroned above the flood. The Lord sits enthroned as king forevermore. The Lord shall give strength to his people. The Lord shall give his people the blessings of peace. In the temple of the Lord, all are crying glory. The first reading is from Isaiah. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, high and lofty, and the hem of his robe filled the temple. Seraphs were in attendance above him, each had six wings, with two they covered with their faces, and with two they covered their feet, and with two they flew. And one called to, one, to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. The pivots on the threshold shook at the voices of those who called and the house filled with smoke. And I said, woe is me, I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips. Yet my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphs flew to me, holding a live coal that had been taken from the altar with a pair of tongs. The seraph touched my mouth with it and said, Now that this has touched your lips, 
Your guilt has departed and your sin is blotted out. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, whom shall I send and who will go for us? And I said, here am I, send me. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Canticle 16 is on page 92 of the prayer book. And we'll say that in unison. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. He has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Savior, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, he promised of old that he would save us from our enemies, from the hands of all who hate us. He promised to show mercy to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath he swore to our father Abraham to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. You, my child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins in the tender compassion of our God. The dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. The second reading is from Romans chapter 8. So then, brothers and sisters, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If in fact we suffer with him so that we may also be glorified with him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Canticle 19 is on page 94, and we'll say that in unison. O ruler of the universe, Lord God, great deeds are they that you have done, surpassing human understanding. Your ways are ways of righteousness and truth, O King of all the ages. Who can fail to do you homage, Lord, and sing the praises of your name? For you alone are the Holy One. All nations will draw near and fall down before you because your just and holy works have been revealed. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen.
sermon today was written by the Reverend Kirk Allen. Oh, I'm sorry, we're going to do the, uh, the gospel lesson. Then I'll tell you about the priest who wrote the gospel lesson. It was from uh, John chapter 3. Now, there was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a leader of the Jews. He came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know you're a teacher who has come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do apart from the presence of God. Jesus answered him, Very truly, I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Nicodemus said to him, How can anyone be born after having grown old? Can one enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Very truly, I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and the Spirit. What is born of the flesh is flesh, and what is born of the Spirit is spirit. Do not be astonished that I said this to you. You must be born from above. The wind blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus said to him, How can these things be? Jesus answered him, Are you a teacher of Israel, and yet you do not understand these things? Very truly, I tell you, we speak of what we know and testify to what we have seen, yet you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you about earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except the one who descended from heaven the Son of Man. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so much must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The sermon today was written by the Reverend Kirk Allen Kubitschek, and he's currently the priest in charge of Christ Church, Rock Spring Parish in Forest Hill, Maryland. Christ Church is a small but mighty parish, and together we are rediscovering what our Lord is, has in store for our future. He spent over 35 years in parish ministry in all shapes and size parishes, and for 15 years worked for the Episcopal Church Office of Stewardship and TENS. He often uses storytelling, music, and guitar in proclaiming the good news. He's married with three adult children and one grandson. Kirk also plays drums in On the Bus, a DC metro area Grateful Dead tribute band. All shall be well, all shall be well, all manner of things shall be well. And his title is You Shall See, See Yourself. One of the challenges to proclamation on Trinity Sunday is that there are no biblical passages that discuss the peculiar Christian understanding of God as three persons. The word in the creed is personas, like the mask Greek actors wear to play different characters. It is always the same person behind the three personas. Other monotheists are utterly baffled by bold assertions in creeds and in doctrinal theses of how the one God of the Abrahamic religions can appear to be three persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and still be only one God. Such assertions about the Trinity emerge from our reflection upon Scripture, but are not found explicitly in Scripture per se. Our readings for this day, for instance, from Psalm 29 and Isaiah, illustrate the compelling power of God's voice, able both to create and destroy creation at all at once, and able to convince the most unsuspecting of us to assent, indeed proclaim with vigor, here I am, send me. The voice can call us to return to the myriad problems of terra firma and risks being a prophet, pointing out all the ways in which we as God's people just have lost our way and need to at least reform our behavior, if not full out repent and begin again. People understandably do not like to hear the prophetic voice, which explains why Jonah 
tried to get as far away from Nineveh as possible. In Romans, Paul leads us into more mystical territory with his assertion that, like Jesus, we can now call God by the more familiar name, Abba, Father, suggesting that although we, although we suffer with Christ, we also will share in his glory. In John, Nicodemus tries mightily to ask straightforward questions of Jesus, only to get an enigmatic response about wind and being born from above, which he mistakes for being born again. Nick leaves shaking his head and muttering, how can these things be? It may be helpful to turn to those Christians throughout the ages we call saints and mystics on the top of the Trinity. Take, for instance, Julian of Norwich, a woman in the late 14th and early 15th centuries who lived in a hut or cell attached to the outer wall of St. Julian's Church in Norwich. During her lifetime, the city suffered the effects of the Black Plague, the Peasants' Revolt, and the suppression of the Lollards. Julian, while sure she was dying, received a series of visions or showings and wrote them down in the first book ever written in English by a woman, Revelations of Divine Love. A popular summary of her showings has been reduced to the popular saying, all shall be well, all shall be well, all manners of things shall be well. Yet a look into the 31st chapter of the long text of her showings may provide us with a bit more insight into the nature of the Holy Trinity and divine love. She would spend the rest of her life sharing these insights with those who came to the window of her cell seeking spiritual guidance. The text begins, and our good Lord answered to all the questions and doubts which I could raise, saying most comfortingly, I may make all things well, and I can make all things well, and I shall make all things well, and I will make all things well, and you will see yourself that every kind of thing will be well. When she says, I may, I understand this to apply to the Father. And when she says, I can, I understand it for the Son, and when she says, I will, I understand it for the Holy Spirit. And when he says, I shall, I understand it for the unity of the Blessed Trinity, three persons and one truth, when he says, you will see yourself. I understand it for the union of all men who will be saved in the Blessed Trinity. And in these five words, God wishes us to be enclosed in rest and peace. She refers to these five words, which are, I may, I can, I will, I shall, you will. With these five words, we learn that God's wish for us is to be enclosed in rest and peace. God wants to surround us with divine love, and each persona of the Holy Trinity is forever and constantly involved in this enclosing or surrounding us with love, which in most of the Bible is described by the Hebrew word hesed, Hesed is perhaps best understood as an act of good faith rather than a feeling. It is a quality that humans are to share with God, that generous ability to put the interests of another weaker party before one's own, most especially the needs of the poor, widows, orphans, and strangers from other countries who are sojourning in the land. That is God's divine love. As revealed to Julian, is acting with love on behalf of others, just as God acts with love on our behalf. Since scripture says we are made in God's image, then we are to be those people who exemplify hesed, acts of faith and love towards others in the same way that God desires to enclose us or surround us with God's own divine love, rest, and peace. This suggests that the five words are, in the end, meant for us. We might think of it as the doctrine of the little engine that could. That is to be made in God's image is to wake up each morning and say the five words, I may, I can, I will, I shall, you will see yourself. Then we are to go about our days generously putting the interests of others ahead of our own. We will then be enclosed and surrounded by God's divine love in rest and peace as we share that divine love with others. In this receiving and giving of God's divine love, we discover that all shall be well, all shall be well, all manner of things shall be well. We find ourselves enclosed in rest and peace. 
When we say, I may, I can, I will, I shall, you will see yourself once a day how divine it will be to know, to really know that the divine love of God in Father, Son, and Holy Spirit means to enclose us and to surround us every day until that time when we will return to the household of God's divine love from whence we come. That day we will all become one of the one, one with the one in whose image we are created. Perhaps this is what you will see yourself really means. We will see who we really are and who are you created to be. We will see that we are those people meant to accept and share generously with others the divine love that those like Julian, Ignatius, Isaiah, Paul, and Jesus have tried so hard to describe and to live through acts of faith themselves. Surely such knowledge of ourselves deserves at least one day every year to remember who we are and to see ourselves as God sees us. Those people made in the image of God's own divine love, who may, who can, who will, and who shall share that love with others, all others, especially those in need. For it is when we do this that we see ourselves as we are, really are, God's beloved. Amen. Please stand and we'll say together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Suffrages B is on page 98. Save your people, Lord, and bless your inheritance. Govern and uphold them now and always. Day by day we bless you. We praise your name forever. Lord, keep us from all sin today. Have mercy on us, Lord, have mercy. Lord, show us your love and mercy. We put our trust in you. In you, Lord, is our hope. And we shall never hope in vain. The collect of the day, almighty and everlasting God, you have given us, us your servants grace by the confession of a true faith to acknowledge the glory of the eternal Trinity and in the power of your divine majesty to worship the unity. Keep us steadfast in this faith and worship and bring us at last to see you in your one and eternal glory, O Father, who with the Son and the Holy Spirit live and reign, one God forever and ever. Amen. In our prayers today, let's remember Mag, Kaylee Rose, Lynn, Mary Ellen, Stanley, Haley, Leslie, Nancy, Mary, Sandy, Mark, Carolyn, Bianca, Linda, Raymond, Ann and Warren, Eamon, Philip, Bill, Mark, Terry, Nancy and her family, Carrie Beth, Lonnie, Barbara, Brady, Diana, Lorraine, Elizabeth, Ralph, Crystal, Honey, Kim, Jimmy, Dennis, Carolyn, Robert and Margaret, Michael, the Reverend Canon Mark Seitz, 
victims of natural disasters, our service members at home and abroad, and Christians around the world, St. Matthew's Wheeling, the Reverend Richard Skaggs, and in our companion diocese in Colombia, the Reverend Ernesto Bose, Parroquia San Lucas. O oh God, you make us glad with the weekly remembrance of the glorious resurrection of your Son, our Lord. Give us this day such blessing through your worship of you that the week to come may be spent in your favor through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. O oh God, the King Eternal, whose light divides the day from the night and turns the shadows of death into the morning, drive far from us all wrong desires, incline our hearts to keep your law, and guide our feet into the way of peace, that having done your will with cheerfulness during the day, we may, when night comes, rejoice to give you thanks through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. O God, the author of peace and lover of concord, to know you as eternal life and to serve you as perfect freedom, defend us, your humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in your defense, may not fear the power of any adversaries through the might of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord God, almighty and everlasting Father, you've brought us in safety to this new day. Preserve us with your mighty power that we may not fall into sin nor be overcome by adversity. And in all that we do, direct us to the fulfilling of your purpose through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, in you we live and move and have our being. We humbly pray you so to guide and govern us by your Holy Spirit that in all the cares and occupations of our life, we may not forget you, but may remember that we are ever walking in your sight through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose Spirit the whole body of your faithful people is governed and sanctified, receive our supplications and prayers which we offer before you for all members of your holy church, that in their vocation and ministry, they may truly and devoutly serve you through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Heavenly Father, giver of life and health, comfort and relieve your sick servants and give your power of healing to those who minister to their needs that those for whom our prayers are offered may be strengthened in their weakness and have confidence in your loving care. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, we commend to your gracious care in keeping all the men and women of our armed forces at home and abroad. Defend them day by day with your heavenly grace, Strengthen them in their trials and temptations. Give them courage to face the perils which beset them and grant them a sense of your abiding presence wherever they may be. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you for making the earth fruitful so that it might produce what is needed for life. Bless those who work in the fields. Give us seasonable weather and grant that we may all share the fruits of the earth, rejoicing in your goodness through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. And let's say together the general thanksgiving on page 101. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts, we may show forth your praise not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit 
the honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Let's go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah.